Hello, everybody! Hey. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Hello. How, how's it going, everybody? Uh, we are the... I did that in the wrong order. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. <laughs> I'm Amy Lynn Perea. <laughs> I'm Kai Tam. I'm Nick Hellier. I'm Sophia Hasegawa. I'm Xavier Pace. And together we are the intoxicated readers. We got a super special show for you tonight. It's going to be nice and short, nice and cool, and it features our five lovely, lovely faces. We wish everybody could be here, but it's been a long week, y'all. Um. Our our prompt tonight, hey James in the chat, our prompt tonight and this week has been write about something you thought you'd regret, but you didn't. Each of us, well, two of us, we only have two scripts tonight. <laughs> two of us <laughs> took that prompt and interpreted it in their own unique way and style. And we're going to read their scripts in a dramatic way and present them for you, our lovely audience members. We have three, oh, drinking game. We have three drinking games tonight. If you are participating in the drinking games for the intoxicated readers, our first rule, as always, is anytime we mess up a line or break character, take a drink. Second rule is anytime... Kai, do you have a drink on you? Anytime Amy Lynn's <laughs> uh, cup of water shows up, Take a drink. It's a cup of vodka. <laughs> just casually That's sip. Just like a pint of vodka, just straight. Amazing. Easy. Oh, Goes down so Lord. smooth. Wow. <laughs> uh. And our third rule of the night, the unique rule for this prompt, which we absolutely planned ahead of time. Mm hmm is who wants to take it, it away <laughs> anytime someone experiences the feeling of regret that's exactly what i was gonna say yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you heard sophie anytime a character or one of us as people show or feel of regret take a drink or mention it <laughs> or mention it okay there's a lot of that in mind. <laughs> Without further ado, we're all ready to start. How's everybody feeling? Heck yeah. Amazing. Great. Sophie, you've got your bottle cap full of vodka? Yep. It's and ready. I've got my it's right bottle there. full of vodka. Let's go. It's full of whiskey. <laughs> no, Ooh. it's not, Kai. What kind of whiskey? It's not really. Honey whiskey. Honey whiskey. Honey whiskey. Mm, whiskey. Yes. Yeah. Uh. All right. Up first, Xavier Pace. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Um, well, as you guys know, this is called Impact, Episode 11. If you've been here, then you know what's going on, like multiple realities, and, you know, just jump right in. Um, Kai, could you also do Christian's lines? And I think everything else is oh. taken care yeah. of. All right. Oh. Interior, Loom Hotel at night. We last saw the group eating and singing. One last get together before they go their separate ways. Everyone has eaten their fill and went to their rooms. They are all sleeping well, but one. Xavier is lying in his bed. He quickly gets up, panting and grabbing his chest. Overheard our whispers. Save us. The pain. The pain. The pain. Please help us. <sighs> I thought you were the one. Xavier puts on his shirt, then leaves the room. Exterior, loom balcony, night. Xavier stares out into the night. Someone comes behind him. Hey, are you okay? Huh? What? Yeah, I'm fine. I just couldn't sleep. There's a pause as they both look out into the sky, the night sky. Why are you up so late? Why are you up so late? I went to get a candle. A candle? 
Yeah, these candles smell amazing. It changes smells here. Sophie snaps her fingers and the wick of the candle lights. See, it smells like... Like... Aerith tree? As Xavier says that, tear runs down his face. X, you're crying. Xavier wipes his right eye. He is surprised and confused. Uh, another life, maybe. I'm fine. It's the candle. Are you sure? I'm positive. It's enchanted or something. It reminds you of Morpho Kingdom. Before waking up, it all came back to me. There was a different version of me in the reality you went to. Yes, there was. I would like to know what happened. Like, how you got this scar. Sophie goes to touch Xavier's face. Under his right eye, Xavier catches her hand. There's a shift. Like the background of Loom Hotel was shifting. Exterior, Morpho Kingdom, day. They are now standing in the garden, surrounded by trees and a pond. In the middle where they are standing is a big tree, and the roots go throughout the entire garden. While Xavier is still holding Sophie's hand... Where are we? Xavier is astonished. This is Aerith Tree. That's my name. Xavier sees the image of Aerith and immediately lets go of Sophie's hand. There's a snap of energy and puts them both on the ground. Exterior, Loom Balcony, Night. They are both on the floor of the balcony. They struggle to get up. I need to go. No, you don't. Tell me what happened. There's a ball of fire in front of Xavier. Fine. I'll tell you the story of King's Chrysalis. Xavier goes to sit down. Above them, at the top of Loom Hotel, are Echelos and Lane. I was fine with you revealing their powers to them in dreams, but doing that is going too far. In order for him to heal, he needs to let go of that regret. He has to mentally heal, before physically. They are coming to terms that they lost everything and everyone. They might not get it back. Well, their earth was destroyed by it, cracking and falling into multiple realities. Angelus walks from the edge of the hotel where she was watching Sophie and Xavier. Who knows? Maybe other people survived are in, and are in different realities as we speak. Even so, they would not remember their old lives or selves. They were not guided to that place. They fell in and became overwritten. It sounds like you know of someone. Regardless, I think I found my team. She says as she disappears in the light of the moon. Cut to Exir, outside of Loom Hotel. Kai and Deja have their bag bags packed. Everyone is gathered throughout the front of Loom Hotel. They all wish them good luck. Kai and Deja vanish in the distance. Now that is settled. Shall we have one more training day before we split up? A tall man with long white hair and large wing tattoo on his back steps forward. He's only wearing white cotton capriche pants. He crosses his arms. Back to the barracks. If you survive and grow stronger, you will see them again. I'm ready. Let's go. They all begin to walk into to the barracks. Cut to exterior barracks. The barracks are a round training ground, almost the size of... A gladiator arena, it is filled with sand and few grassy patches. There are even there are even seats like a crowd could watch. The Anu are all seated in the audience, cheering. It looks like a festival. It is the festival of partings. So were they waiting for us? Yes and no. Usually many practitioners fight and show how they're grown. From where they all are standing, Zealous jumps to the middle of the arena. He lands and dust settles around him. He just jumped a hundred yards. Oh, one more thing. The first in the arena picks their opponents. And since I won't get to see your growth, we'll fight right here. Zealous points, but he's a hundred yards away, so no one knows who he's pointing at. Achilo steps forward and puts her hand up. Always the first. No one can see who you're pointing at. As Agelo's hand is up, what appears to be a wa water above the arena reflects Zealous and shows the crowd. He points at Xavier. The reflective screen above shows Xavier. Why? Honestly, I'm tired of fighting. Well, practitioners fight in pairs. Agelo's waves her hand over Sophie. Sophie teleports ten yards away from Zealous. Well, until your partner is ready, show me what you got. Sophie smiles. 
Sophie's right arm catches fire and balls of flames erupt around her right side. It's about time. Zella goes in for an attack. Sophie dodges and uses the gravel of the arena to slide around. Willow wisps The small fires around Sophie fly towards Zealous. The tattoo on his on his back becomes a wing. He uses it to block Sophie's attack. With the brandishing of his wing, Zella disappears. Zealous with super speed appears right in front of Sophie, leading in with a punch to the stomach. Zella moves so fast that it seemed like he didn't hit her at all. Sophie goes flying into the arena wall. What just happened? It was like Sophie didn't know where he was coming from. But he attacked her in a straight line. Xavier stands on the edge of the arena, silent. So you will let her fight alone? I, I don't know. Where's that mentality? Inner strength can conquer all? That you will be the greatest in anything you do? That person died with his reality. But what about right here, right now? Sophie is flung into the wall besides the group. She's bounces, she bounces off from sheer force of the impact. Oh my god, Sophie! Amelin begins to step forward. Sophie waves her to stop. I have to be able to stand on my own. Good. Now come at me. I call on the winds of Aerith. The flames around Sophie grow bigger. Her left side is engulfed in what is green wind. Her left hand holds two spears. She throws one at Zealous. He dodges and catches. Spark. The spear blows up in Zealous' face. He slides back near the edge of the arena. The crowd goes wild. Sophie begins to spin her spear. Zella begins to fly away. Aw, don't run. A tornado of flames engulfs Zellas, and with the flames are spears of wind. Zellas tries to dodge, but the best of his ability, but the spears are fast, alongside with the will-o'-wisp. You think this is enough to stop me? Of course not. Sophie appears in front of him, smashing him to the wall of flames. Zellas tries to counter, but his strike lands on a gust of wind. Zealous begins to fly up, trying to escape, but Sophie is waiting. She begins to spin her spear again, knocking Zealous to the ground of the arena. See? She doesn't need my help. Maybe not right now. But as you are now, who would... Was, but as you are now, who would rely on you? A pitiful excuse of a warrior? Everything I knew was a lie. What I did know is gone. But yet everything was real. It's hard and confusing. Is your regret that strong that it stops you from moving forward? If you stop moving forward, you lose respect for all that was lost. I sent people to their deaths, all for one person who I killed in the end. I watched my friends die over and over. Sophie is now out of the vortex of the flaming wind. She is now collapsing. She is now collapsing it on itself. Zealous begins to move and walk through it like it's nothing. Achilles. Your choice is strong. I'm jealous. Zealous' hair becomes black. His now white capris have turned gray. His eyes no longer silver, but blood red. The wings on his back retract back into his back. You need to make a decision. Do you move forward or die in regret? Do you want to get stronger to help your friends? Zealous dispels the vortex around him. There is a pause. Everything is silent. Zealous demeanor changes. It's more menacing. He smiles before disappearing from sight. A hundred yards away from Sophie, he runs. He runs towards Sophie. Running so fast that he looks like a... Pata Morgana. Echolus, make a decision now. But before one could speak, Zealous is right in front of Sophie. Just looking down and smiling. They both just look at each other. Sophie uses a wind to create distance, but he is already behind her, looking down at her again, his blood-red eyes staring at her. She whips her spear around. It breaks on contact. Zealous then returns the favor by kicking Sophie straight up into the air. That's not possible. All he did was raise his leg up. I'll get her before she lands. This is over. As Amulin begins to step into the arena, Zealous doesn't even turn around. But everyone doesn't move. They can't move. What is going on? Amy Lynn, do not move. I couldn't if I tried. Me either. Look. Zedleth now looking over his shoulder. His eyes look like they are bored, 
or disappointed to look at them. That's his malice. His intent to kill. If we could move his attention... If, he, if we could move, his attention would be on us. So you two are scared to face his will. Achilles says to Xavier. I never said that. Sophie will probably be injured. Then do something. Tis not my fight or path. You know the greater threat they all face. But you'll leave them out there without guidance to get killed. Zealot is waiting in the middle of the barracks. This battlefield. This arena. Just looking into the sky. Sophie is falling back onto the ground. Zealot catches her by the face. Then slams her into the ground. <clears throat> so, what will you do? Zealous looks down on Sophie, who is weak to get up. She is so tired that she can barely stand. She's out of breath, just waiting there, waiting for something to happen. Waiting. <laughs> uh, quick intermission. To be continued. <laughs> You can do it, Sophie! Come back! <laughs> My goodness. He's just getting to the good part. Yes! Hey! Everybody drink. Hello. I'm sorry. You're fine. Can you guys see me okay? I'm just making sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, say that again? I'm just making sure everyone can hear me. Do you know can where we are, Sophie? Guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everybody drink! <laughs> Egg. Yeah, I tried to carry that on. Can you try speaking? Yeah. Hello? Hello. Okay. <laughs> now I can Hi. hear you guys. Good. Um, <laughs> so sorry. My phone just died for some reason. Um, it happens. Like the Wi Fi on my phone died. Can we start from. Um, we were at mid 10. Uh, we can go to that middle paragraph again. X. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Cool. Zealous is waiting in the middle of the barracks. This battlefield, this arena, just looking into the sky. Sophie is falling back onto the ground. Zealous catches her by the face, then slams her into the ground. So what will you do? Zealous looks down on Sophie, who is too weak to get up. Damn you, you bastard. Zealous is about to give... The final blow, but a scream is heard. Ah! Ah! Xavier begins to walk onto the arena. The crowd is silent. Fine. If this is what it takes. I didn't get the power master class like everyone else did in their dreams. So I'm behind. But I have a strong will. You. Are. Weak. Well, you honed in on your intent to kill on me. So I must be a threat. But see, everyone is making me mad today. Like, I can't just be sad for a little bit. But I get it. I can't stay there forever. Stop talking and fight. Zealous goes into Strike Xavier, but he dodges everyone. Zealous is pushed and falls to the ground. Xavier walks to Sophie. Hey, can you still fight? Of course I can. I won't let him get away with slamming me to the ground like that. Take this. Xavier hands Sophie a sword. It's made out of green crystal and emits this low green glow. Infuse it with your wind. It should heal you faster than you just using your power alone. Xavier turns to face Zealous, who is just now getting up. Who is still staring at them both. Oh, sorry I'm late. <laughs> Was that supposed to be your cool intro? I tried. Zealous runs, then disappears once again. Xavier blocks the attack from behind. When you first transformed, you were stronger. I get there are stages and... But all this is... But all this is whack. Xavier catches Zealous fist. With a hand still in his pant pocket, Xavier sweeps Zealous off his feet and then just kicks him. <laughs> A axe kick, crescent kick, hook kick, calf kick, reverse roundhouse, 
and then does them repeatedly with speed and precision. He finishes it with a butterfly kick, landing Zealous into the wall. I guess they would say I'm OP. But your form is now is weaker. Xavier puts both hands into his pockets. Agilus, all that, all this talk for this? Can I leave now? Xavier turns to leave. Shut up! Don't you dare mock me! Zealous now at the same height of Xavier has silver, has silver hair now, and is younger than before. Energy of Zealous is blowing everything back. Sophie, it's time. This is Prime Zealous. Seal has been broken. Here comes rivalry. Is Xavier that strong? Not yet. But he is battle-hardened, so weak state zealous would not compare. I get it. From the reality he came from, all he knew was war and peace was thrown away to save his friends. Precisely. Now watch. Zealous wings return, energy emitting from him. Sophie and Xavier walk to the middle of the arena before him. So, Xavier, do you have any regrets? I have a past. There are people I miss, things I wish I could change. But you cannot be drowned by your past. I have to move forward and take the memories with me. Your past is the ocean, and your future is a shore. Everything happens for a reason. You take what you want and make, and make it have meaning. You washed up ashore for a reason. Sophie ignites her right side. On her left, Xavier leans back and cracks his knuckles on his right hand. The crowd sees an on overheard reflection and cheers. Right. They both stand before Zealous, who has emitting this wild energy. End of episode 11. To be continued. Ah, the cliffhangers. Right? <laughs> well, I, guys, I'm going to be honest. It took me, like, I had to get everything together because it's been a minute since Impact. It took me four hours to <laughs> I was Damn. tired. But yeah, there's more coming. That. But yeah, I'm glad I just, you guys like it. I want to see these battles. Heck yeah. It's so bad. No, for real. The battles I are know. so sick. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the plan. So like, why are you why are you making me be the one get eaten up? <laughs> you'll, you'll get stronger lot, because of it, Sophie. Exactly. But everyone, everyone. I mean, last time when they had the fight with Bia. I mean, Amy Lynn and Christian got the road, so, you know, everyone's getting right. beat up. Mm. Right. <laughs> it's inevitable. Yeah. But yeah. Everyone's going to get stronger and stuff. Things, I got things planned. You know how it goes. You know how yeah, it goes. Yeah. But yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. Amy Lynn talking to herself was. I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We love a quick character show. Right. I was like, okay, let's mm. go. <laughs> Before Impact episode twelve, I gotta go back and remind myself what all happened. <laughs> you gotta piece right, it together yeah. and just read it like a, mm. like a show script, mm. you know? Yeah, you're gonna have I a whole. Care. A whole trilogy of films by the time you're done, yeah, or I mean, just a whole a season. Please. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it like a whole season. I'm trying to get it. I want to get it animated. Heck yeah! But yeah the amount of pages boom. you must have now, like all of them accumulated together. It's yeah. a oh, shit yeah. ton of writing you're doing, dude. It's a lot. It's impressive. Oh, thank. You. I it comes and goes, but yeah. Uh, so I leave it sometimes, and I can come back to it and be like, all right, I got a new episode. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's the best way of writing it, I feel. It's not getting, like, stale. You're allowing yourself enough time to really flow. Yeah, Hell yeah, man. Good job. Can't wait for episode 12 in Thank a few you. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, up next, Kai Tam. It's all you, my man. Hello. Great. So this is called Leaving Sunset Valley. Uh, we're gonna jump straight into it. Alright, the cast is Amy Lynn as Thea, Nick as Rob, and Sophie reading stage directions. Take it away. Exterior. Sorry. 
<laughs> Exterior. Carnival. Night. We open to the site of a carnival set in the fictional town of Sunset Valley, Dallas. Through the mass of people, we focus on one particular family. Father, Harry, Lolland, is talking down at his daughter, Tia. Tia. The mother, Jaina, is trying to keep the peace between the two, but Thea quickly storms off. Upset, Harry leaves to get some fresh air, bumping into his brother, Robert Lolland, 28. Harry briefly explains the situation before leaving. Jana hugs Rob. Okay, I'm sorry. Is it is it Jana or J Jana? Jana, I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, Harry briefly explains the situation before leaving. Jana hugs Rob in greeting and nods, knowing that he may be the right person to talk to Thea. Cut to exterior carnival Ferris wheel night. Thea is in line to the Ferris wheel. We see Rob maneuver his way through the line to her to her side. Rob glances at Thea, who doesn't tell him to leave, so without a word, they both get on the ride. A moment of silence passes. Ten. How are you doing? Thea only shrugs. Well, the view is great from up here. You can see the whole of Sunset Valley from the top. It goes to show how small this town really is. Big enough for me. Of course. But it may not be that way forever. I'm not gonna push you, but I'm here if you need me. Thea sighs. She looks at her Uncle Rob, who she trusts and respects more than any one of her other older relatives. Finally, she lets her walls down. I don't know what to do, Uncle Rob. Dad's pushing me to go, but... I mean, I just started freshman year. Eliza and her friends are just starting to talk to me, and Camille... Her cheeks flush. She looks away and shakes her head. It's not fair. I... I don't want to go. Hey, at the end of the day, it's your choice. Harry's gonna do his best to convince you to go, but he's not gonna force you. He just keeps talking about how I'm going to regret it if I don't go. Like, okay, Dad, I get it. This is a huge opportunity. I won a writing competition, and now I have the chance to work under a professional writer, and I'm dumb for not jumping at the chance, but... Jesus, I don't know. It's like... That's not all that matters. I have a life here, or I'm just starting to make one, at least. Things are finally starting to look up for me, and then... Slow down and take some air there, Thea. Don't drown on your own words. That's how it feels like. Like, I'm drowning. Yeah. I remember feeling that way when I was a little bit older than you are now. World's a big place. But it sure felt small. There's some serious satisfaction in finally finding some grounding, footing in a place you've struggled to stand for so long. Okay, poet. My point is, what you're feeling now is normal. It's a big choice. I'm just worried that if I leave now, I'm gonna miss out on everything. I, a year is a long time. By the time I come back, everyone's gonna be different people. They'd have, they'd have moved on, and then it's back to square one. I just don't want to regret leaving. Can I share a story? Only if it's relevant and interesting. Wow! I'm kidding! <laughs> Whatever, share your story. Kids these days are so harsh. I'm not a kid. No, of course not. My bad. Share your story! <laughs> okay! But I'm sorry in advance if it doesn't live up to your expectations. As you know, I'm not exactly a favorite in the Lawland family. I've disappointed my parents more times than I can count. In comparison, Harry was the angel child. He did everything for them. And he was good at everything he did, too. Yeah. Great having to live up to that. I don't think he realizes that's what you're going through, Thea. 
Sophia is silent, twiddling her fingers together as the Ferris wheel rocks in its place. When I graduated high school, I refused to go to college, just to spite my parents. I made a lot of mistakes. I left home. I fell in love. I got heartbroken. I started my own business firm. I failed. And every day, it's like rinse and repeat. I just continued to disappoint them. But... My life wasn't about making them proud. My world didn't revolve around their opinion. I love them, and I know they love me. They built the foundation for my future, but I'm the only one who can take myself there. My point is, at the end of the day, leaving was what I wanted to do. Think about this. If it weren't, weren't for your new friends or Camille, would you still be hesitant to go? Sophia's face says it all. What if I lose them all? What if they don't want to be my friends anymore? What if Camille decides she doesn't want to be with me? What if you make new friends in London? Riders just like you, who want a competition, just like you. What if you make a new connection? You are so young, Thea. You have so much success and failure ahead of you. And that's what makes it so exciting. I know it's scary. I know it hurts to leave people you love behind. But you can't compromise yourself for other people's needs. That's not your responsibility. Do you ever regret it? Leaving home and making grandpa and grandma mad? I, I did. At one point. And I thought I would for the rest of my life. But I don't anymore. Rob wraps an arm around Thea's shoulder and squeezes her. I met the love of my life when I left. I found my passion when I left. I made irreplaceable friends when I left. Rob looks at Thea. But more importantly, I made the decision to leave. Regardless of what my parents thought. Regardless of what I was potentially leaving behind. I made the choice to build a life on my own, and I wouldn't change that for the world. Thea takes a deep breath and looks out at Sunset Valley. She is silent for a few long seconds, and clarity washes over her face. I want to go. Rob smiles. The Ferris wheel stutters to a start and carries them back down. Straight to black. Oh, that was a beautiful read. Loved it. I need I a love whole book series. So much. Need a whole book series. I need to know. Why. <laughs> I love how Nick turned southern halfway through. I was southern the whole time. He was. Right. He, right. He, he, I just really right. found it halfway through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, like, you cradle it like a little baby. You just sat right in there mm. towards the middle. It was so nice. Yeah. It was so good. I was like, yes, yes. Beautiful read. I want more Thea, man. This is beautiful. Right. Oh. Hey, sequel to the prompt next week. I mean, well. It, no, well, I mean, it's fine. We yeah. Nick done it last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can all take turns doing it. We're not Marvel. Yeah, we don't, man. you know, we don't yeah. be getting on people about it. Right. We're chill. I was so also really like the setting. I like um, the Ferris wheel conversation. I love that. Everything happens on a Ferris wheel. <laughs> yes. New prompt. New prompt idea. Yay! Send in your prompt. I like being able to this. envision what the characters see and like mm. looking over the city on a Ferris wheel. I'm like, it's a very specific visual and I appreciated it a lot. 
Yeah, just like yeah. even the Ferris wheel alone, because like it's so, I don't know, like, because we all have that feeling about being on the Ferris wheel, sitting by someone, and it's like you just you just have to talk because you know you're yeah. just going around and stuff like that, and you know, brought that out, so it was great. Yeah, glad you guys liked it. I was worried because it was just a lot of, it's just a lot of talking, <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot of monologuing, but um, you guys brought a lot of depth to the characters i really liked it i want to go film it hell yeah i think we lost sophie she's just cute. frozen in place <laughs> and, uh, that, that's on the stream forever yeah <laughs> clip, it. clip it people oh my gosh no but like seriously it brought me like to um uh euphoria if you guys seen that christmas special one like, because they're just talking in the diner and it gets so deep. Reminded me of that. Oh, I haven't watched that, but nice. I think it's... Check it. The way you interpreted the prompt is just such a... It's such a universal feeling for so many people. Like at AMDA, for example, we had people from all around the world, and I speak for myself when I say that the the step out of a smaller town it's difficult and i like how i like how you captured it in the script thank you all right guys that's all we've got Sorry. tonight heck yeah short night heck but a good yeah. night yeah it was good we had everything we had action adventure we had fighting we had sentimental Debt. Wow. Deep drama. You gotta world. love it. Uh, let's introduce ourselves. Right. I'm Amy Lynn Perea, and I have been sitting on a Ferris wheel. I am Kai Tam, and I have been having tattoos on my back that are actual wings. Nice. I'm. I've been Nicholas Hellier, and. I, no, I am Nicholas Hellier, and I've been Sophie's freeze frame. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I no. wish I screenshotted no. it. Was it funny? It was yes. great. Beautiful. You're so beautiful, Fuck. Sophie. You're so but, like, in the best way. Shut the fuck I've up. Been... <laughs> I've been Sophia Hasegawa, and I have been thrown into walls at unfathomable speeds. <laughs> But survived. That's the yes. yes, always. I'm Xavier Pace, and I have been battle hardened. Nice. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And together we have been the, the intoxicated, intoxicated readers. readers. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All those links are down below. You can join us on Discord, also down below, where we play video games. We have a community where we chat and share memes and get your ideas and suggestions and prompts. We also have a film fest that we are hosting. Heck yeah! Oh. All across the month of April. You can get that information on the Twitter or the Instagram. Also, just reach out to us if you have any questions. Any of us. Right. We'll figure it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and spread the word. The more people who are a part of it, the better it'll be. Seriously. Accepting anything and everything. Except um, certain things like porn. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to host uh, <laughs> uh, an adult Unless it film avoids nudity. <laughs> later in the year. Uh, in the summer months. <laughs> no, please, God. <laughs> <laughs> Catch us Wednesday for game night and next Saturday for our next workshop stream. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.